Okay. Okay. I don't want to just con continue where we left off on the balance sheet. Yesterday we had constructed the balance sheet, and we had talked about my recommendation and how to build the balance sheet. And I talked about that there are two ways to think about cash flow and balance sheet modeling. I said that one cash flow drives the balance sheet, or two balance sheet drives the cash flow. And my recommendation was to build the model where the cash flow drives the balance sheet because it's a more logical approach. And the idea of taking the balance sheet and backing into the cash flow um, could lead to missing some important cash flows, <coughs> which might be okay if that's all the information you have. But if you had a choice, I'd recommend cash flow driving the balance sheet. And so based on that, my recommendation in constructing a balance sheet is looking at the balance sheet line items from cash all the way down to shareholders' equity. And for each line item, ask yourself two questions. One, which cash flow statement line item drives the balance sheet line item? And two, in what direction? Right? And what, what that should do is as you start to think about it and start to get comfortable with that, you'll realize that the, the way a balance sheet stays in balance is when each and every cash flow statement line item is matched to some balance sheet line item. The balance sheet is driven by how cash is sourced or spent. And so the first step in the techniques is there's a pattern of formulas you'll see as you build the balance sheet, which always starts with the balance sheet line from the year before, plus or minus the cash flow change. And to decide whether it's plus or minus is determined by how cash flow drives that balance sheet line. So in other words, for all the assets, we use a minus sign. In other words, for all assets, it's the balance sheet from the year before minus the cash flow because of the relationship between the cash flow and a balance sheet. If there's a positive cash flow in the cash flow statement, that probably means you've maybe sold something or you've collected on something, the asset value should go down. So it's, it's a minus, it's a subtraction. The only exception to that is cash. Right? With cash, cash adds to cash. For liabilities, we use a plus in the middle, right? Because the idea is if you're raising cash or if you're raising debt, right, your, your debt balance increases, and that's a cash inflow. Right? So we use a plus. So if we're going to raise debt, cash is going to go up in the cash flow statement, and the liability is going to go up. And the same thing with uh, shareholders' equity. If we're raising equity, cash is going to go up, and equity is going to go up. Right? So for all liabil liability shareholders' equity, um, you, we would use a plus. And so we started to speak about yesterday what that means when you're faced with a balance sheet that's out of balance. And the first thing is if you have this kind of clean and consistent set of formula in your balance sheet, balancing a balance sheet that usually takes hours and hours should be a very quick task. And my recommendation for doing that is if you're faced with a balance sheet that doesn't balance. So I'm going to show you this balance sheet, and then we're going to do one together. I'm going to zoom back a little bit so we can see the whole entire balance sheet. And here, this balance sheet is now out of balance. My recommendation to solve this, to figure out what is wrong, based on the idea that, that this should be driven from all the cash flow changes, is to first create a temporary differences column on the balance sheet, subtracting the first unbalanced year from the prior year that's presumably balanced. You need to have one year that balances. If your historicals don't balance, then you have something wrong with the way you've inputted your historical numbers, right? This differences column should represent cash flows, right? You subtract year to year each line item. They should match the cash flow changes. And so what you want to do is you want to go line by line and work backwards. Go line by line, look at each differences line item that should match cash flows, and ask yourself the same two questions that you asked yourself when building the balance sheet. Number one, does this value match the appropriate cash flow line item? If yes, then the second question is, is this balance sheet balance moving in the right way? And you want to go through that procedure for each balance sheet line item and check off, it's very important that you check off each cash flow statement line item as you go through this procedure. Because if you've done this and everything's been checked off appropriately, 
the balance sheet must be in balance. That's true because, as we mentioned yesterday, there are really only four ways a balance sheet could be out of balance. One, there's a line in the cash flow statement that's been left out, has not been linked to the balance sheet. So going through this process where we're checking off cash flow statement items as we see them being used would help detect this error. If, you, if, you, if you're done with the process and there's a line in the cash statement that you left unchecked, you know you forgot to put that in your balance sheet. That's why the balance sheet doesn't balance it. Two, there's a line item in the cash flow statement that's been linked in two places in the balance sheet. Very common. So when we go through this process, we're, check, we're checking off cash flow statement items as we go along. If we've realized we're che we've checked off something twice, we've detected one of these problems. Three, the line item, the, the line item in the cash statement is linked to the balance sheet, but it's going the wrong way, or it's linked to the wrong column. This is why we have to match the numbers. We've got to make sure that the, the differences number actually matches the cash flow number. And we have to step back and make sure that the balance is going the right way. If, if any of those are out of sync, then we know that we're either mislinking pluses and minuses or we're linking from the wrong column. There is a possible fourth possibility where we've gone through this process, procedure, everything checks out, Yet, the model is still out of balance, and that must mean there's a problem with your totals. Either your cash flow is totally wrong, or your balance sheet is totally wrong. But going through this process, which only takes about 30 minutes, should prove any one of these errors, and there's no other way a balance sheet can be out of balance. So if you think about it this way, it should be logical. So let's put this to the test. So I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm going to give you a model that we're going to work on together on our own and try to go through it together again. <clears throat> so first of all, 2012 balances, matches. 2013 doesn't. So I'm going to delete everything after 2013. I don't want to get confused. I want to focus just on 2013. Once 2013 works, I can copy that whole column to the right and everything's going to work. So let me delete all this. I'm going to create a differences column. I'm going to title this differences. Now I'm going to subtract 2013 from 2012 or vice versa. It doesn't matter. I'm going to copy this all the way down. So these differences should match our cash flows. And when we check off each difference, it should match each and every single cash flow. So for example, 2004.1 reflects the increase in cash and cash equivalents. So we should see on our balance sheet, change in cash and cash equivalents be 2004.1. I'll use a different color highlight. Let me, let me just put these highlights back in place. That's right, I'll just use like purple. So 2004.1 is the change in cash and cash equivalents. So, that checks out. In other words, this is like it properly, the numbers match, it is increasing, it's supposed to increase, right? It works. I'm going to go to the next one. Receivables increased from 5937 to 603.5 and increased by 146.5. So what should I see in my cash flow statement? I should see a minus 146.5 in receivables. So I'm going to go up to here, I see 146.5, but it's plus 146.5, right? We said we should see a minus 146.5. So what's going on? Something must be wrong in the formula. And you can see, because it's plus 146.5 in the cash flow statement, this should have been decreasing. And we can detect the, the error is, the formula says F99 plus cash flow statement, it should be minus, right? Every asset should be a minus. So we detected that because we noticed that the, the, the balance was going the wrong way. There's one problem solved. Inventories is increasing by 148.4. So what should we see? Minus 148.4 in inventory. That works. Next, prepaid expenses is increasing by 1475. We should see minus 1475 in the inventory, sorry, the prepaid expenses. And we don't. We see 773.9. Right? Something's wrong with this one. 
Let's look at the formula. It says equals F11, looks right, minus, that's okay, cash flow H15. So H15 is the wrong column. It should be G15. Yeah, everything else is G, 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 G. If you don't know, you don't have to go in there and think about what exactly is wrong, just, just build the formula again and see if it works, right? So another way to do it is just to go in and say, all right, well, the formula should be year before minus cash flow statement. G15. Now it's right. Other current assets is remains unchanged. Yeah. Property plan equipment. So let me just highlight this. This being used. Property plan equipment is impacted by capex and depreciation. So the sum of our capex and depreciation should be five, six, two, one, three. 14123. I'll do this on the side. So let's see. So 14213 plus depreciation. 56213. Right? Negative 56213 means the asset should ultimately go up. So if it goes up by 56213, we should be okay. And it is. It's going up by 56213. So we're good there. Goodwill isn't changing. Other assets, other assets looks like it's impacted by G26, G11, and G8. So G26, G11, other, 318, and G8, discontinued operations. Let me just sum these up, let's see what this makes. The G26 plus G11 plus G8, all these items, they look like they're, they're responsible for other investing activities. That sum is minus 120, so the other assets should be going up by 120. It is going up by 120, so that checks out. So let me just make sure I'm highlighting these items. So we've utilized loss from discontinued operations already, depreciation, other operating activities. We've utilized CapEx. We've utilized other investing activities. Okay, so we've checked off on all those items. Let's move on. Anything that's not changing, I'm not going to double check. If it's not changing, no cash was affecting it. Maybe we had left something out that should be changing it. We will have to check that at the end. Accounts payable is going up by 701.2. What should we see in the cash flow statement? Plus 701.2 in accounts payable. That checks out. Accrued liabilities up 1425.7. So we should see plus 1425.7. That checks out. Accrued, uh, accrued income taxes down 408.9. We should see minus 408.9. That checks out. None of these are changing, so I won't include this. These aren't changing. Deferred income taxes up by 707.3. So what should I see? Plus 707.3. Okay, looks okay. So things are checking out. We found a couple errors already. Let's keep going. Retain earnings. <coughs> Retain earnings up by 13452.1. So that's impacted by what? Net income. Impacted by net income after distributions, right? Thirteen four five two point one. Thirteen four five two point one, and that should be increasing. Yeah, so that's good. Then we have other accumulated comprehensive income. Let me make sure I've, I've checked this off. Accumulated other comprehensive income is affected by. Well, let's see what's affected by G38, G36, G8. So G38, plus G36, plus G8. And I see here that I'm using G8 twice. 
So that, that would have been an error if it had value. I have detect, right? This is how you detect it, right? GA clean neutral. <clears throat> but without that, it's going down by 48. It should be going down by 48. And that works. And, and I want to just take this GA out because it's being counted twice. Although, since it has no value, it's not really impacting anything. But that's how you would detect something like that. Nothing else is changing. So we're still not balancing. So why? So we've gone through everything. Um, We've, we've dealt with these with other comprehensive income, but we realized that we didn't deal with treasury stock. We left that out. Right. So there's the problem. Treasury stock has been left out. It's not been included. So where should we include it? In Walmart, there's no treasury stock item, so we include it in retained earnings. So we need to add to retained earnings formula plus purchase of treasury stock. And now it balance. Yeah? So that's how you do it. So if you go through this process, we do that in four minutes because it's, it's easier. So I'm pushing it along, but but um, it should it's foolproof, right? Even if now ideally you have a model that's structured in this way with consistent formulas where you can first go in and look for similarities in the formulas. Every asset should have a minus sign in the middle term. Every liability should have a plus. Every shareholder's equity should have a plus. Every asset, the first term should be equal to F, the prior column. The second term should be equal to G. That's another quick way to determine this. But even if you have a model that's been received from a client that's, that's a complete mess, um, you can still, what I strongly recommend is, I actually recommend printing it out if you can, and just subtracting the differences with the calculator, writing it down like a pencil, and just checking off the cash state limit line items. Because Sometimes you can get thrown off by a really messy model if the formulas are all out of whack. Even if the formulas are out of whack, you can still go in and try to detect what the problem is exactly, right, by, by going through that. And I always like to tell this, this story of I was on the phone with, this, this was your back, years back before we had the school for students when we go out and we teach, teach firms and we had a potential private equity firm call to try to see if they wanted to bring us in. And for some reason, I was looking at their model. I don't know if they want to see if we can teach that model to their incoming analysts. And I noticed that the 2013 balance sheet was off by like 0.1. So oh, your balance sheet is a balance sheet. And the guy said, he was like an associate vice president. Oh, it's a rounding error. It's never a rounding error. And this guy, this is a pretty legit private equity firm. The guy was from Bulls Breaker Bank. You know, he had some experience. And I said, well, I can teach this technique to balance this. And he goes, this model's been circling around our company. This deal's been going on for four or five years. It hasn't been closed yet. Um, it's been passed on from the associate, associate. No one's been able to figure it out. And so I said, well, let's go through it together. And we went through this method. And we literally found out what it was. And I remember it was the fact that one of these cash table line items, it was including a percentage. And he's like, this has been passed around for years. And nobody's been able to figure it out. We literally did it in 15 minutes. And it's just a matter of, and this is the thing, like, and he's been trained well, right? He's, he's gone through a public record bank, and he probably, he probably didn't take a lot of time into it. If it's taught conceptually this way, it, it really does help. And that model could have been a complete mess, but if you put it out on paper, we didn't print it on paper in that example, we did it over, over WebEx together. You can even just subtract the calculator and make sure that those changes match the cash flow. And that's the way to, to think about it. It's, this, this is going to be good for you on the job to avoid kind of all matters. More importantly for you guys, if you're doing, if you got like a case interview, you guys in the back might start to get very soon. Or you, you get, did you get a model test yesterday? Uh, Monday. Not oh, you're, you're going to do it? If it's a balance sheet balancing thing, you shouldn't have to worry about this anymore. But I don't think that would be this particular not, right? Um, okay, right. Okay, so what I want to do is, Let's take a break. I have a broken model. I want you guys to try to spend 15-20 minutes trying to solve it. Then we'll do it together. I'm going to put on a flash stick, so I want to pass it around. And it's good, good practice. Let's take a break.